So when you push that, then we go live on the... Hey guys, welcome to Facebook Live Q&A today. Today we have a special guest with us, um, Glenn Foreman. He's actually the owner of the company. We also have Mike and Keith who are here every week. But we're actually really happy to have Glenn here with us because yeah. he's a busy guy. He's out doing a whole lot. He's pushing the company and you've been hunting, isn't that right? Well, that's, that's why I've been busy today, out there loading the boat. Yeah. We're going hunting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, we're, we're up in northern Utah and southern Idaho. It's got a big freeze right now. Got a little thin ice on, on the rivers and the ponds and that's perfect. And we'll go out and bust, we'll bust ice, put the decoys in and kill birds. Oh, all day. That's what we do. We, yeah. dri we drive around. Drink stuff and kill birds. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I need the shirt, remember? I, I need that shirt. Um, so my question for you is, what type of motor are you running? You especially? 44. 44? And um, the bell drive? Yes, the HDR with reverse. Awesome. Uh, I need it because I run rivers and I have to run over shallow with a load and we usually have two or three guys in the boat. So I need that 40. And what about, what type of boat are you using? Excel. Excel, oh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, I like the 1854. The 1854. Yeah, that new pro hull we have, um, there's not a lot of stuff in it. It has a little bit less flotation in it, which makes it lighter. The hull is thicker. It's a tougher hull. It doesn't flex as much. Um, it's just a great boat. It just, it, it seems to run a little faster, uh, but it's lighter and tougher and so, when I'm running on the river and I have to get over those rocky and riffle areas with gravel, yeah, that that hole does it. Awesome! No, that's amazing. I, Jeff and I, we actually went out on one and we had a blast. But thanks to you, though. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen the boat. I'm sure. It's yeah. Questionable. <laughs> <laughs> Questionable. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that might be a demo boat. <laughs> yeah, that that boat is gone. Okay. That's that's for uh, when it snows. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we have that. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and kick off with a couple questions here. You guys know the drill. Um, go ahead and type in your messages as we're live. Um, I'll read them off to Glenn, uh, Micah, and Keith. And we have some previous ones that we have right here, and we're going to go ahead and kick it off. This one's for you, Glenn. Um, this one's from Rod. Um, his question is, is the forum down on Mud Buddy, and why? Oh yeah, the, the forum's down. Um, I shut it down a couple weeks ago. Um, we're redoing the software and frankly with all the activity we have on Instagram and Facebook and social media I'm not sure if we'll start the forum back up but we're trying to decide because we're do actually doing a transfer of all of our sites to a different server and we're trying to decide if we're going to continue with the forum so I'll make a decision sometimes in January. Well and as you guys can see we've been very active on social media lately and we feel this is a better way to engage with you guys and I'm sure at your convenience it's actually nice right? Yeah, the, the forum is nice. It's always there's a, there's a wealth of information on it. Yeah, and that's the part we're going to miss because so many people have had these kind of questions in the past and they've been answered on there. But you can go to the Q and A on Bud Buddy's website also, and most of those important questions that people mostly ask are answered there also. Oh, exactly. Um, we actually have Bart here with us on Facebook. Hey, Bart. Um, his question is: What is a good tip to install new exhaust gasket? Um, new tip or, or a good tip is just keep it clean. You don't want to get any debris down in the ports or anything like that. Um, it's a good idea to soak the bolts overnight before you take the muffler off so you don't strip them out. Other than that, just keep everything real clean before you install it. Make sure the muffler's cool when you do it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would actually check the flanges too because make sure, make sure that the flanges are squarely mounted on the gasket and of course tighten them a little bit a little bit on the left a little bit on the right like you do a wheel yeah right. exactly. keep those flanges right. straight on the heads because you'll compress part of the gasket and part will be open and you'll get you'll just get another exhaust leak and if you have exhaust leaks we also have some thicker gaskets yeah they, that you guys yeah. can send out so if you got some a muffler that you just can't keep gaskets on get a hold of keith and he'll send you a set of those thicker gaskets and sometimes that works yeah you can also double up on the gaskets too i didn't know that so yeah Learn something new every day. I do. I'm <laughs> serious. These guys, I'm learning. They learn. I fix them all. <laughs> so Luke Blanco just hopped on. His question is, how much does it cost to have a head gasket and a head change on a 4400 series black tip? So the gasket and the head? Yeah. So the gasket so and the is head. it replacing the head or are we just replacing just the gasket? Uh, he put the a head gasket and head changed 
on a 44. Luke, do this for us. Go ahead and send in a more descriptive to us so we can come back and address that for you. Yeah, because the cylinder heads can be pricey. Exactly. You know, if they needed to replace that. Head gasket's not too big of an issue. So if it's just head gaskets, but, yeah, but maybe he's asking about labor also. And a typical dealer, how much, how much time would you? Four hours usually. About four hours replacing a head? Yeah, right. Yeah. So you know, figure that plus parts. Yeah. Would be a good answer. Um, we have Kenny, um, Kenny Johansson's asking, what's the closest dealer for Jacksonville, Florida? Kenny, what you can do is actually go to our dealer page tomorrow, which we're actually putting up a new one. Um, you can go in there and type in your zip code and it will actually show you the closest dealer that'll be available to you. Um, if, it, if you're in a hurry, you're trying to get it now, what you can do is also go to our website, call in on our phone line, and we can actually help address that for you directly that way. Um, now, Brian Rutherford, how many hours does it take for the transmission clutch on the HDR to loosen up enough where the prop won't spin in neutral? It, it varies. You know, some of them are a little tighter than others. Um, yeah, it depends. Um, most of the new motors, they, they don't burn very much. Mm -hmm. um, there was a period, I think two years ago, yeah, that the gasket was rather tight. And it took 20, 20 some hours before it loosened, wore up enough to wore out enough oh, wow. to turn. But um, if it's if it's a new issue, if it's just starting to do that, um, that could be a, a service issue. Right. I need to get with Keith to find out what's going on. But if it's a brand new motor, it's the prop is still turning quickly. Again, turn with get with Keith and find out because typically the new motors they don't turn. The prop does not turn rapidly when they're in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. No. Definitely. Um, or neutral, rather. Or neutral. So what um, Mike is going to do is he's going to actually go ahead and give this away. Go ahead and hold it up. We have some new Mud Buddy apparel here for you. Um, so go ahead and PM us. That's for Brian. And go ahead and PM us uh, your address, and we'll go ahead and ship that out to you, Brian. So that was a good question, but yeah. also you might want to tell us what size. Exactly. Yeah. That's the biggest one. You don't yeah. want a small if you're an extra large. <laughs> So I have one here, and this is a personal question from Jason Croxford. How do I become a pro staffer? <laughs> well, you know, we talked about that. I mean, one, obviously, you know, get a hold of one of the, the dealer leaders here, which is Clint Hovey or Dave Reynolds with Excel. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I know we're starting a new page on the website, and we're guys that have waterfowling, hunting, fishing businesses and actually apply to be a pro staffer. And exactly. then of course there's some associated benefits with that, including you know, some of these sort of things, exactly. and then some discounts on, on parts and even new motors sometimes, so. And there's a lot of great benefits about being a pro staffer. I mean, sure. that's why I work here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a long ways yeah. from you gotta quit, my you gotta, requirements. Well, you gotta quit tearing not. up my demo boat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? That might be the boat you get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so we have, uh, Tyler here, what's the lifespan of a clutch motors a BD4400? The clutch or the motors or pretty much? Yeah, just do the clutch got, and the motors. I mean, we have some dealers that have motors that have 1,700 hours on them. You know, they've had a little bit of work here and there, but you can get many, many hours out of them if you service them right. Yeah, I mean, you, you know? change the oil and mm -hmm. check the bolts and... You know, look at your owner's manual and look at some of the tips on our web pages on how to maintain your motor. Um, keeping uh, heat in, in, in your gasoline this time of year is important. Yeah. Keep the ice out of the, the injector systems or carbureted motor systems because that leans on a motor and it wears them out quicker. Makes them run um, better. Yeah, you know, using a, a good grade of oil. We, you can use regular oil, but we like to use synthetic or synthetic lens in our engines. Yeah. And that extends the life of the engine. Um, it's just a matter of maintenance and taking care of your motor. Just normal running, you know, these, these motors, I've seen them with two, three, four hundred, five hundred hours easily. Mine, I think I've got a size like 234, and I change the oil every 30, 40 hours yeah. and with synthetic blend mixture. And I make sure I put heat in the fuel when it's really cold and stabilizer whenever it's sitting for over a month to make sure that that, that gasoline in there, particularly just new gasolines with ethanol, don't cause damage or... They dry up. We used to call it varnish. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it just gets it gets in your, your system and it, it, it just destroys the motor because in turn it leans out the motor. Sometimes they won't even run. 
But other times they could just lean out an engine, and when you start leaning out an engine, the temperature goes up, the wear increases, and the motor life is, is shortened. So, you know, your engine can last you a long time if you just take care of it. And just know? like a car or a, or a dirt bike or anything. Oh, you yeah. know, if you're going to like spend the money on something, especially like a mud buddy, I mean, how high performance and the durability and how great it is, you, you would think you would take care of it. Right. So. And, and these motors, you know, are like motocross bikes. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. I mean, there is, there is hardly a use that's more severe. You know, I would think maybe a rotor teller, you know, a race car, a yeah. motocross bike, and mud buddies, or any of these mud motors, mm -hmm. they take a beating. Yeah. Frankly, you, you got your foot to the mat. You're running these things full throttle all the time. I mean, granted, we're not sucking in dirt and and dust that wear out engines, but just just the plain fact that these motors are running at top RPM all the time, mm -hmm. um, you know, is obviously going to wear a motor out quicker than other ones. Oh, definitely. Well. But you can expect hundreds of hours if you take care of it. Um, so we have another one here from Janice Foreman. Hi, brother Glenn. <laughs> Love the live discussion about my buddy motors. Keep it up. Yeah. We'll, we'll send you a free hat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Taylor Lightsey says, what's up, guys? How's it going? Hey. How you doing? Um, I got Bill Moore here. I have an HDR that I love, except for the trim switch. It sits alone in the football that it's very difficult to get my fingers onto it, especially if I have gloves on. Are there any options available? Don't wear gloves, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from the Twinkies with those fat fingers. <laughs> yeah, I know Bill. Yeah, I know Bill. Yeah, I was like, what's going on at Northern um, Yeah, the, it's, it's just about reaching. Sometimes you have to reach, particularly with gloves, you have to reach across. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 tr the trim is, is pretty close. Yeah. Um, so, but sometimes you get in a tight turn on a river or in a marsh or through timber, and uh, you can't afford to leave. <laughs> Take your thumb off the handle <laughs> no. and get up to the trim switch. So sometimes you have to use the other hand. Yeah. No, those, those newer trim switches are nice, though, quality wise. Yeah, quality yeah, wise. They're, they, yeah, they're Mercury, they're Mercury switches that you see on all of their tiller motors. Yeah. We've been using them for a few years. Those are awesome. They're good, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm lucky I had a trim switch. I took Jeff out and we were in that <laughs> corner and I was losing it. And, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you something else. <laughs> tell you something else, guys, what we have now. And I was running one yesterday, is we have. Uh, in addition to the motors now where you can put your trim switch up on your grab bar in the boat. Oh wow. And that's yeah, sweet. That is because cool. you when you're running you're hanging on with the right hand, the trim switch is right there. Yeah. And uh, that's an accessory. And I, I think they just released them a week or so ago. Right. And it's a kit. Yeah. And a kit that includes everything you need to put it in a typical grab bar that's sold by Mud Buddy and Excel. And it's a universal grab bar. And it goes right into the handle on the end of the handle, has a wire kit that goes to the motor, and then you unplug the wire on the handle of the engine, replug this thing in, and it has the wires going to the trim switch. And that is sweet, especially, I find that when I'm running the river and I'm getting a tight turn, I can't afford to be screwing over that trim switch, but it's right there on the handle, and it's sweet now. I was lucky I actually had that grab bar, because I'll tell you what, Jeff and I would be out in that water, you know, and... Well, you know, also chasing coots, like you were doing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> those tight turns. Yeah. And, Great. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> so we got some more live questions here. Hey, hey Bill, that, that was a good question. So we're gonna send you a free Mud Buddy hat also. Oh, there, there, there we go. go. And, those, and those hats Mud Buddy has now are Sitka hats. Sitka yeah. Mud Buddy hats. We, we buy them um, from Sitka, and yep. so we'll have to get you on the list. Yep, they have the Sitka and the kind of the off the fade in the back, just like yep. that. Mike, how do you feel about the aftermarket performance system, like Delta Performance? We don't associate with any of those parts, or we're not around them, you know. Or I hear good things. I, I mean, I don't know all, much about I, it. I know. Yeah. I tell you what, if you're going to get a, a motor modified, um, Delta Performance or or Mica, yeah, you know, th those are two yeah. the good places. And that's just from I talk to a lot of customers. And I haven't run any of his motors, but I hear they run good. But the customers that work with Delta are really happy with his products and his service. I think he does a good job. And so does Micah. Mm -hmm. So those are the two sources I know of that I would trust the motors. And that's Delta and, and with, from Micah. So. Well, I have to say Micah because he's sitting right here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but to be honest, <laughs> but to be honest Bill, I'm getting good feedback from Delta Performance Motors. So it's a good engine. Yeah, and I saw they have a lot of good reviews online too as well yeah. um, on there. And yeah. not too many bad ones, which yeah. is good. Micah yeah. has no bad reviews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, 
All right, Chad Rain, do you have to use the stabilizer with ethanol-free gas? Yes. Matter of fact, there's two types of stabilizer. There's a stabilizer, there's the red and the blue. And I like to use the blue because it's specifically made for ethanol fuel. Okay. And they just came up with it, I think, last year. But definitely use it. I use it in every tank full, whether it's being stored or not. And if it is stored, I fill the tank, I put the required amount of ethanol in it, and I run that motor for about five minutes, and you can store it two, three months without any issues. But blue is Perfect. the one you use for ethanol. Perfect. Good uh, question. That is Matter of fact, um, what was his name? Chad. Chad. Chad, we're going to send you a Rick Dunn Echo Championship duck call. So we'll get that off to you. So make yep, sure you go ahead and PM to our Facebook page. I'll reach back out to you. Make sure to send your address over to us, and we'll get that sent out to you. Um, this one's from Tyler. Will my buddy ever look into going with? Oh, I lost that one. <laughs> <laughs> with a bigger motor like a Boss Hoss. Well, actually, um, a lot of folks don't know, but Mud Buddy owns the engines from Boss, the drives. And so it's an affiliate, they're a partner with us. Yeah. And so we allow them to build those bigger motors and we build the 44s as large as we build. And the good folks at Boss, the, they build that new 75 and it's a, it's a good motor. Matter of fact, I have one on order. Yeah. I have an 1860 order from Excel and I'm getting one of those motors. So they're good motors. Awesome. But as big as we're gonna build is the 44, but you never know, I mean, hang around guys. Yep. Jan January's coming soon. Yep. It, it is. is. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, so, we're going to jump over here for a quick second um, to some people that already sent into it. So, uh, Matt Bach, what prop comes with the 4400 EFI? 44 EFI comes with the new Raptor 3 blade prop. Raptor 3 blade? 3 blade, yes. Okay. And then um, this one's for Micah. What type of motor would you guys suggest for the timber? I'm looking for something with speed and durability. Okay, um, depends on what size boat he's running. Um, all the motors are good for that situation. You need to just know how much weight you're gonna be carrying, how shallow you're gonna be going. Um, you could run a mini, you know, with a little 14 footer if you wanted, but you just need to understand that you load it up too heavy and you're not gonna have enough power to get you where you wanna go, so. Yeah, particularly if you're crossing shallow areas. Yeah. Getting in or out of the timber, you need enough horsepower to put your boat and load on step mm -hmm. to get across that. Because if you don't, and you're running, you're, you're drafting deep, you're going to get hung up, particularly yeah. on the logs. So. Yeah. And of course, all of us know Freddie King, and he needs three motors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I think surprised he, sometimes what he could do with them. I'm telling he you. sent me a picture yesterday of a boat in the air. A lot of people uh, jump stuff, but Freddie does it all the time. And of course, my question was, were there any survivors? Yeah. <laughs> Did you hit anyone? Uh, that's yeah, the yeah. real question. Yeah. How many parts do we need to say to <laughs> Freddy? I would not ride in his boat. <laughs> that, that's a stress test right there. Do you have a problem? Oh, yeah. He tests he's, those boats out. Oh, yeah. He's, he's pinwheeled a couple of cypress trees. Uh, yeah. I, I believe. And, you know, and, and other types of timber in the... I've seen him out there, but yeah, he's, he's tough on me. I bet you there's people that would pay to take a ride with him. Not me, oh, that's him. I believe it. <laughs> We've had people way. actually go on and say, can I get a ride with Freddie? Freddie you know? King. <laughs> I'd get a good pay of waiters. And, and yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll need to sign an insurance form here. And <laughs> right. Stuff. I'll watch from the side. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like he says, keep everything inside the boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Try to keep everything. Hands, feet. Hands. <laughs> um, all right, here. Um, all right, this one's from Instagram, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and ask you, Glenn, this one. Um, does y'all's 25 HP Mini come with reverse? It doesn't. Okay. You have to go to the HDR to get reverse. And I probably won't add reverse to the Mini because that's gonna increase the cost and the weight. Uh, the Minis have to be light because they need to do what they've been designed to do, and that's run in shallow water. Exactly. Um, and secondly, adding reverse those smaller engines would increase the cost significantly. And the guy, reason those guys buy the mini motors is one for smaller boats and two because of the cost point. Yeah. So we probably will never have reverse on the minis. But can they buy a reverse kit? No, they can't. Okay. No, it's push pull. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Get out of the boat, turn it around, pull it. They find a way to back it up. Hey, we do it. And if it's a little boat, it's easy. I love the reverse though. I mean, when we were out, the reverse is just amazing. You know, you just have to know how to work it so it doesn't 
push you down into the ground, the mud even more, you know, but it's awesome. I love it. Um, all right. Um, do, are there any more questions on there, Jeff? You want to go ahead and shoot some out right now? I, I do. I've got a question from Royce. He says, my motor didn't come with a cavitation plate. How important are they? Well, it depends. I mean, we, we stopped putting... We started putting cavitation plates on about three years ago when we came up with the HDR. With the HDR. But prior to that, they didn't have cavitation plates. Um, and I used the cavitation plate for a couple of reasons, and one of them is the reverse. Yeah, the yeah. reverse, that cavitation plate keeps the water in the water, keeps the mud in the outside the boat. Um, and also, the thrust hits the cavitation plate, hits the back of the boat, and helps the boat back up, actually. Um, so a motor without a cavitation plate is a lighter motor, and frankly, I don't think you even need it. Yeah. If you just have neutral and forward, like most mud buddies were prior to three years ago, uh, we didn't put too many cavitation plates on them. But if you run a lot of deep, deep mud, and a lot of you that have run deep mud know that you, you, you trim down as far as you can, but there's a cycle in effect, you'll see it, where the air starts entering the mud. Yeah. And once that air hits the prop, it causes it to cavitate and you'll lose traction. Yeah. And so the trick there is obviously to trim down as far as you can. If you still have troubles with that, we have cavitation plates you can buy for the older model motors yeah. that will prevent that air from reaching the propeller and of course give you better traction. They'll hook up better in that deep mud. And where would they get that plate at if they wanted one? They can call Keith. Yeah, yeah, we had it's, it's something we had. We didn't sell a lot of them, but we haven't. They might even be still in stock. I don't yeah, we do. That's yeah. a kit. Yeah, and they it's come with the bolts and everything. In yeah. It, so yeah, but you don't. But you don't need it unless you have those issues and circumstances. Yeah. yeah. But usually trimming down a long way, just trimming down deep, deep, deep. You won't have that issue. Yeah. Excellent. I've got a question from Darby. How shallow of water can you go with my buddy? What's the shallowest? You could be. Yeah. <laughs> if you're on plane, you it can depends on the driver. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How well can you drive? Yeah. I had a guy call me the other day, and he said he was got into a bay, and he felt the boat starting to slide. And he looked down, and he saw it was really, really shallow, and he tried to s gently turn in the bay to get out there, and the boat slid sideways. He lost traction, and of course, it sat on the bottom. Yeah. You know, and so you can go as shallow as you can until you get stuck. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and it could be you could be viscous mud, which is mud like almost like pudding. Yeah. And you can actually take off in it. Um, but yeah. if it's as hard as this floor and it's under twelve inches because the propeller our, tip, our typical props are eleven to twelve inches, particularly on the HCRs, you need more water than that so it doesn't cavitate like I was talking about earlier. Yeah. To get on step. So but you can cross an inch of water, full throttle. I mean, very easily, and, and he, that includes mud, where you just, all you see is a track of the boat and a track from the propeller, as oh, long as you keep going. But when you stop, you need to stop at a place where a propeller can be submerged and you get back up on step, or else you're basically going to be hung up on the bottom, or if it floats the boat just enough, you're going to be just idling out of that area until you get to a little bit deeper water. Yeah. There's a pond that we hunt in Idaho, and for years, guys never went on the west end. And we went down with an airboat one day and we saw a small hole. It was just a small hole where some beavers and muskrat or whatever made an area that was about 45 feet and it was about two feet deep. That's all we needed. <laughs> just to after, give that, that, <laughs> after that, we would, we would rather use a mud buddy than my, one of my airboats because the airboats are really loud. Yeah. <laughs> and they blow all the ducks up. We would scoot across those shallow areas for a couple of miles and we would shut down on the other end of the lake in that hole. <laughs> and then leave the boat there and we'd walk to our blinds or whatever else and we got back there at least we could put the prop under the water and get yeah. some traction get on step in 50 feet yeah. and hit that shallow stuff and we could run that shallow stuff forever and just run right through it and that's one of the things we did in Farmington um, Logan actually one of our engineers he uh, said hey let's just hit this mud right here and it was water and then you know good what 20-30 feet of just pure mud and we just going straight across it not a single problem. I was worried though going that I was going to fly forward once we hit that mud, but it just shot right through it. Well, the mud is usually pretty slippy, but if it's mixed with sand, oh, yeah. on the Great Salt Lake, there's a lot of areas that, even though it's shallow, it's got a sandy bottom and it's grit and you can feel it can the boat stop you. Yeah. Oh yeah, where's the propeller out? And you don't want to stop. Yeah. You want to keep going. Just keep on going. Mm -hmm. Because when you do stop and it's hard bottom, you're stuck, guy. 
Yeah. And it could be a little bit of work. And that's not going to be yeah. fun getting that <laughs> no. out there. But no. we all do it. And, uh, but I don't do as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just stay away from, you know, I scoot across those areas and figure out a place to get going again. It's like that Freddie King video you just posted this week when he shot across that land, you know. Yeah, yeah. He still thought he had it, but, you know. <laughs> didn't you have it. Stuck. <laughs> yeah, didn't have it. There's been times where I had to unload everything from the boat. I had a, one place at Mud Lake up in Idaho, I had to take the blind off the boat, put the seats in about this much water with a hard bottom, and my son and I pushed that boat for about a quarter mile. And had, had a, and That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, we had to go back with one of our small airboats to get all of our stuff because we screwed up. Yeah. We went in there and tried to turn around and it sat on the bottom and it was hard and we were stuck. I mean, big time. I think I remember seeing that prop after that day. Yeah, that's <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> I wore that prop right down. I didn't want to push that boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm getting out of here. I get another prop. You know, like, I can't get another heart. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, Excellent. One last question um, from Tyler. He, said, he asks, where is the furthest you've ever sent a motor? Wow. There's New Zealand, I know. Uh, New Zealand. Across Lake Um We've got one going, I believe it's to Thailand here pretty soon. It's amazing where people come up with, I want to buy a mud boat motor, yeah. and where they live, and how our sales guy Clint can get it to them. It's just crazy. Well, and 40% actually of our demographics are outside of the United States, which, which is amazing because the, the grasp that everybody has is all over the world. I mean, social media, we get people coming in just like, hey, can you guys ship to here? And it's like, we got a triple check. I mean, this is a whole other third world country, you know. If you've got cash, we'll get it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had one of the Arab nations, we had one of the princes order a boat and motor. A container showed up out back and... We loaded that trailer, boat, motor in the container and set it off. And I don't know where they got the water over there. <laughs> they got the but he ordered one of the boats. And I think he just he, he couldn't stand to see all the every, all these photos on Instagram. He just had to have one. Oh, whether he needed <laughs> oh, he, had a, he, he had a pool, so he wanted to ride in <laughs> right. the pool. <laughs> but we, we, we don't sell a lot of motors. I mean, it's not continual, but yeah. every month we have motors that go overseas someplace. That's amazing. And the far reaches, yeah. No, it's quite amazing. Even for me, I've been here two months now. I'm really diving into it. And the just, you know, you think, okay, the U.S., but then you have people all over the world speaking different languages wanting it, and it's amazing. Yeah. You know, thanks to you, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got another, we, do we got somebody else lying? No. Nope, we're done. Nope, that's, that's really it. We need to give Good questions, guys. Thomas. Yeah. Hey, Thomas. Um, we're going to throw this at you. What is the biggest difference, Micah, between a 37 EFI and a 44 EFI? And for that, Thomas, with your question, we're going to throw you a Mud Buddy hat. It's a nice beanie. I wear one myself. Uh, good they're stuff. They're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I wear they're not one. too heavy. Yeah. Did, didn't we have a question about throttle cables, too? Oh, oh yeah. Let's, let's answer that one because we've been seeing that a lot, and it's, it's that time of the year. Right. To, add, to actually ask this. <laughs> How do I stop my throttle throttle cable from freezing up? I haven't had this problem in the past. Just started this season. The, the, if water gets in the throttle cable, obviously it's going to freeze. And if it freezes, sometimes guys will put their hands on it and actually warm the cable up yeah. and get their throttle working. But the water's still in there. <laughs> if they scoot across the lake, it freezes while stop. they're going. And when they get to where they're going, they leave off on the throttle and it's still going wide open. Yeah. Um, it can be dangerous. It can also break the cable. Um, the best thing to do is the throttle cable, the way we designed the motors was the throttle cable was high going into the carburetor or the injector area where it's the fuel injected motor. Yeah. And it also makes a loop where it goes into the throttle lever. And those loops keep the water from flowing down into the cable. And if you do get water in the cable, basically take the cable off and just a lot of WD-40. And actually I have taken it where I've taped the spout of WD-40 onto the end of the cable and shot it in there until WD-40 came out the other end. And of course it leaves a residue WD-40 and I put it back on the motor, but I make sure I wire tie the cable so it elevates a little bit going into the throttle cable and it's elevated a little bit coming from the carburetor or, or the, the manifold area yeah. for the fuel injector. So that water can't flow down inside of it. But if you get water in cable, guys, you need to get it out because it could be dangerous. WD-40 just helps with keeping the water from going into it. WD-40 of any of the silicone-based lubricants will do it. And it, it displaces water. And it keeps 
water from going in there and when it does get water it doesn't lock the cable up but still I mean I, I used to until we figured out the trick of elevating the cable on both ends I used to lubricate that cable every year because 90% of my season it's it's you're you're 30 oh, degrees or less. Oh, it's yeah. it's freezing cold yeah. now. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you're running down the river, we run a lot of rivers here. And if you run down the river, and leave up on the throttle, and it's still going wide open. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Airboats this time yeah, of year. That's why I'm wearing a kill switch. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of shuffling going on when you're trying to shut the motor down. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, it, it, do your maintenance on those throttle cables, and you'll be one. They'll last a long time, and two, it'll be safer. Yeah. You can also take uh, like balls of grease and pack them on each end. Yeah. Yeah. Help and just keep the water out. Yeah, and that keeps the water out from going in. Too. Right. Yeah. Okay. There's a variety of things, but just elevating the cable so water can't flow down the cable yeah. is the best way to do it. Just a little, you know, goes back to preventive maintenance. You know what's going to happen eventually when you get home, tear the cable off, squirt some WD 40 on it, and so the next time when it's cold, you don't have to worry about it. There's too many crazy stories about what people do to get the throttle cable to work, but it's yeah. just... I don't, I don't hear it that often, but it, this time of year I do when it starts to get cold. And yeah. Some guys have had motors for a year and never had an issue. Right. But, and see, we send the motors out with the handle attached to the side of the engine to fit in the crates. Yeah. And when the dealers put the handle on the motor, sometimes they cut the wire tire, pull on the cable, and it flattens the cable out and removes that little loop I was talking about. Yeah, you want to keep that. But just keep it... the. Part of the cable higher than the ends, and the water can't get in it. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. That was a good question. It is a good question because we've actually been seeing that a lot on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we've been posting those pictures out from Canada Outdoors, and a lot of people are like, you know, how are they not freezing out there, you know? And it's like, this is a good time to address it right now. Um, but that does do it for us here today. Thank you guys for all the questions. Um, and remember, next Thursday, uh, Q&A and once again Glenn thank you for taking the time out of your day come in here and same thing with Mike and Keith you guys are always super busy yeah. but once again thanks and uh, we'll see you guys next week okay thank you thank you